Welcome to this Thanksgiving Eve worship service at Church of Our Savior, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. We begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forgive the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door for us. Through Jesus, you and we and all of us are forgiven. By Jesus, we are welcome. In Jesus, we are called to rejoice. So let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Come all you people, come and praise the Savior, come all you people. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Led you through the 
great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made the water flow for you from Flint Rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end, do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and my might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all God's benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases.
He scatters abroad and gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for, for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession and gospel of Christ, and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I begin the sermon for this Thanksgiving Eve. In the name of Jesus our Lord, Amen. The story of the first Thanksgiving is quite a simple story. The pilgrims arrived in 1620, sailed into Plymouth Harbor, after exploring several alternative sites, cleared some land and built a settlement. The New England winter was harsh, harsher than anything they had ever experienced before. They survived on meager rations with they, which they had brought along. Half of them died. Every family experienced the loss of a child, a parent, or a grandparent. In the spring, they planted crops with the help of natives who showed them how to fertilize. By harvest time, they knew they could survive at least another winter on corn, squash, beans, peas, and barley. They brewed beer, which they drank in impressive quantities. Their leader, Governor William Bradford, declared a time to rejoice together after a special manner. He sent out four men to bring back ducks and geese from Plymouth Harbor. In addition to poultry and vegetables, there were shellfish, cod, and striped bass. 
It did not sit down at a long table with a white linen tablecloth praying as the natives around stood watching them. Some artists have depicted it that way. These people, these early pilgrims, stood and they threw pieces of meat into stew pots that simmered over pits of open fires. There probably was no turkey. The New England turkey was lean and fast and hard to shoot. What they had in abundance was venison. One hundred natives showed up with five freshly killed deer. Historians record the first Thanksgiving marked the conclusion of a rather remarkable year. The pilgrims arrived at the tip of Cape Cod, fearful and uninformed. They spent the next month alienating and angering every Native American they came across. By all rights, none of the pilgrims should have emerged that first winter alive. The pilgrims were narrow in their beliefs, we know, we've read the history. They regarded Native Americans as inferior to either be converted to their brand of Christianity or be killed. But some of the pilgrims were of a different spirit. They regarded the Native Americans as brothers and sisters, not enemies, and that made a difference. This year, for us, because of COVID, Thanksgiving will be different. No in-church worship, no large family gatherings. My own family has chosen to be separate in their own homes. Thanksgiving this year will be more subdued. COVID is spiraling out of control. The number of those getting sick and dying is growing. Businesses are shuttered or closed. Hospitals are overwhelmed. When will that large number of sick and dying be regarded as real? And so we give thanks, just as the early pilgrims did. But we give thanks not for the sake of God, but for our own sakes. Our giving of thanks doesn't make God bigger or stronger or more in control or more holy or more divine. Giving God thanks does not make God more glorious because God is already glorious. God is who God is, light of light, very God of very God. We are blessed. We've got food. We've got a roof over our heads. Many others around our world do not. We can get care when we are sick. Others can't. We live on. Others die. We sleep in beds. Some sleep on city streets all over our land. And we step around them. What we need above all else, even as we give thanks, is what the early pilgrims got. It's mercy. Mercy in the middle of suffering and pain and death. We go about living by the sake and for the sake of God himself. And while we do not understand mercy, we do pray on this thanksgiving that mercy will spread to every human being and every land, and no one will be left out for any reason. We need mercy, even when we think we're strong. We need mercy when we believe we've got our life all put together neat and clean. We need mercy even when we think we are superior. Mercy is needed to repeat for people all around our world. People who are deprived and hurt and killed. 
Mercy for those who live where fires born, burn, where winds blow hard. Mercy for those whose cars crash into one another head on. Mercy for those where hurricanes whip through their land. Mercy for those who get sick with COVID and are put on respirators. Mercy for those who get lost. And people, even young ones, get lost every day. They run away and they disappear. Life is just too tough. And we need mercy even when we believe we don't need mercy. We are just fine. So on this Thanksgiving Eve, our prayer, though short, is meaningful. Come to us, God. Give us mercy. Come to us in Jesus, the one who suffered and died for us all. The one who gives us mercy, even when we think we don't need mercy. Come to us, Jesus, with mercy. Mercy without end. Mercy we do not understand, but mercy we must have. Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray, longing for Christ's reign to come among us. We pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, you send from your abundance the people, towns, and resources needed for all the ministries of your church. We give thanks for the work you have accomplished through your people, and we pray for your continued blessings on our ministry together. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Bountiful God, you feed us through the richness of the land, water, sunlight, and ample crops. Bless all those who cultivate the land to bring forth its bounty, especially farmers and migrant workers. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Merciful God, you order our lives by your providence. We give you thanks for laws, infrastructure, and leadership that structure and support our human endeavors. Align our purposes with your law, that all our understandings may bring you glory. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Loving God, you open our hearts in compassion for one another. We give you thanks for the care and healing received through the hands and feet of your servants. Send us to love those who are most in need of your mercy. We especially pray for healing and comfort for those on our prayer list and for those we know, friends and family members and loved ones who are in need of your healing. Insert their names now as I pause. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Hospitable God, you connect and strengthen us through meals and conversation with family and friends. In this time of thanksgiving, steer us from passive receiving to active response, from old quarrels to reconciliation, and from overconsumption to true gratitude. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for our call committee as it moves toward finding a pastor for our congregation. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the love and care we have received from saints who have gone on before us. By their example, enrich the generosity of our witness to others. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever, and together we say, Amen.
We pray, O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Let us pray as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, Sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Please join in singing the sending hymn, Let All Things Now Living.